Empire and Politics for the People. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech for the 11 o'clock block on a given Thursday. And with Tim Apicella, Winston Welch, our guest here for a discussion, a change up discussion, if you will, about uh, while Rome is burning, actually, while Rome is fiddling, um, the world is burning, okay, or at least our relations um, with uh, Russia and China are burning. And, uh, you know, it was so fascinated, you know, the news is so full of this blow by blow, every moment discussion of, of the politics and who's going to do what and what their aspirations and arguments are, nothing happens. Um, but at the end of the day, while all that's going on, we have degrading relations and increasing threats from both Russia and China. So I thought we'd do a change up today and talk about that because that is that is a reality. And although not much is happening in Washington, at least not much in legislation, uh, a lot is happening in terms of our relationships with those two countries, especially. Uh, welcome to the show, Tim Winston. Thank you for coming down. Good morning. So um, we know that we have had a problem with Russia for a while, and there's a distinction between how Russia operates on us and, on us and how China operates on us. Let's talk about Russia first. What's the status of our relationship with Russia? Um, Joe Biden thought he was going to, you know, have some control over it. He went and talked to Putin and, and got some sort of, um, you know, agreement. Uh, I'm not sure you could say it was a binding agreement of any kind going a few months ago. Um, but it seems like there's no question, like they're, they are interfering with our election, 2022 and 2024, and they're busy hacking us. Um, how's our relationship with them? Can't we do better? Uh, is that for me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could do better, but um, I think we've made remarkable progress since the Trump administration. Anything went with Russia uh, when Trump was president, and I think we've set the tone back to where it, it needs to be set, and that is, you know, firm but fair. Uh, I wish we were a little bit more firm in our our, our interaction with Russia. I, you know, Joe Biden went over there, yeah, and 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 it's talked about. Um, no tolerance for hacking, but yet it continues. And uh, it's a carte blanche uh, invitation for hackers to do so. And Putin says, I have no control over him, but we know that's not true. He, of course he has control over it. He has control over um, everything that goes on uh, with uh, cyber crimes. And it all leads back to the Kremlin. And so we're doing good, but we could do a lot better. So Winston, what damage is happening by virtue of uh... Vladimir Putin's efforts against the United States. It, it, it doesn't stop at hacking. Um, he's, he's doing everything he can to uh, foment division and unrest um, using social media. Um, it's like happening every day in various states. And, and I think if you take a look back down the field and now, you will see that the, uh, what do they call it? The Inter Internet Research Agency uh, is busy undermining our society. What damage is happening? What damage is being done to us? Well, that's exactly it, isn't it? It's been happening over the, it's the slow, steady, as it were, um, especially accelerated um, in the last administration. I think Tim's right that there's there was a new sheriff in town and he said, look, basically, um, you can do damage on our, uh, on uh, with our stuff, but we also can do it the same way around. So, um, mind your p's and q's we know that they're, they're going to continue to do it that's not that's not not going to happen but uh it seems that there's been some some reset because we just don't hear a lot about this um as we as much as we used to and i don't know maybe it's uh uh there's some uh idea that there's a because of the new sheriff things aren't going on and maybe they are going on worse than they ever have been or maybe they're on a different level or um uh, more insidious or or just more subtle but it seems like uh, there's been some understanding that's been reached. I noticed the Europeans stood up a little bit and uh, flexed their muscles, and uh, uh, the, the Russians pulled out their uh, their ambassadors to NATO uh, for, for some kerfluffle there because the Europeans had kicked out some of their um, 
uh, emissaries as spies. Of course, they were spies, but you know that's what they do. They just have a list of people when they're ready to kick some dust up. So the Europeans are, I, I think, uh, as part of all of this, is that you're getting these realignments and this reawakening uh, as America may not be seen as, uh, or especially in the, over the in the past administration, as the trustworthy ally as it was before. Uh, and Joe Biden is having to uh, repair and strengthen those uh, relationships as best as he possibly can, but sometimes the damage is done. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the Europeans, when they say they may have to chart their own uh, path uh, towards security, but they also absolutely want the uh, the American partnership and the American umbrella. And they, they know that they cannot do without that. They're just simply, they're not able to, and they don't want to. Uh, and, you know, somehow we've just all got to get along. I think there was an interesting article I, I, I sent to you today, which was, William Shatner's cried when he came back from uh, his uh, his venture into space, seeing this tiny blue ball out there. And he said, every person on Earth needs to go see this thing of our little blue pan planet in a sea of blackness, uh, just, you know, nothing else out there. Uh, and maybe that's kind of what we need to do is send up our all our world leaders and say, OK, now look back at this and figure out how are we going to get along in this and um, you know, that said, that's a little Pollyannish, but... Um, oh, I think they ought to take Congress, especially the Republicans, up there in space. Send them I'm, I'm not sure they should bring them back, but they should take them up in space. <laughs> the moon colony, uh, yeah. And have them look and, look and see that little ball. Uh, Tim, you know, I wanted to ask you this, you know, it seems like Putin's orientation over the years, over his whole career, uh, is to try to, dis, you know, dis, 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 dis Mm, dissemble, um, disrupt uh, anybody in competition with him. So, you know, what he does in terms of driving wedges uh, in the United States, and he's done that, we know that. If you recall all the news stories since the beginning of Trump, when we first became aware of this, um, he's, he's, he's done it on a regular basis in the U.S., but he's also done it in other countries. We know he's done it in the U.K., He's done it in any country that he considers an adversary. Um, and I think what's, what's interesting is he wants the West to be disrupted. And he is disrupting it country by country uh, with few exceptions, uh, all of Western Europe and, and of course the United States. And I think there's a reason for that. There's a grand plan for that because if he can make us look bad, then he's more powerful. I mean, can you talk about that? What his long-term strategy might be? I think his long-term strategy is that which Khrushchev stated back to Kennedy, I think it was 61, um, we will overtake you and not a shot will be fired. Uh, that is his overall strategy that, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, remember, he's, a st he's still a communist. I, I don't care what anyone says. He's a communist at heart. And, um, you know, he's a former um, expert in KGB matters. And that's his nature. That's just who Putin is. And that is to disrupt societies in, in, um, in, in Europe and, and the United States and build up, build up Russia, um, a corrupt Russia, a, a land of oligarchs and um, that enrich him personally. And the more he can disrupt and, and, and garnish illegal money, um, the better for Putin. Uh, he's no hero of the people. And can uh, we trust him? Can no, Joe Biden trust no, him? not for a second. Not so how do you deal with that? Well, how do you deal with it is you, you know, um, Reagan used to say, um, no trust, but verify, but you don't trust. You just have to verify over and over again what Russia says they're going to do. If we're in an agreement with them on on nukes or, or any agreement we have with them, uh, you don't trust them. You just have to verify everything with actions and not words. And I unfortunately, I think Biden tends to trust people more than he ought to. Uh, but I think he's on to Putin, and I think um, he's not naive with, with the, the nature of Putin and his KGB ways. And um, that's why I, th I, have, I have hope that we will be a stronger uh, nation and not as permissive. The last five years has been a disaster. And you know it's, it's Putin's dream come true that Trump was president of the United States and look to the brink that Russia has influenced us in the elections and it couldn't have gotten any better for Putin that we're in a cold civil war right now. I mean, he's laughing every day as he's eating his caviar. And um, what can I say? He's a happy guy. 
Well, Winston, is he happy because the Republicans seem to be running things in Congress? Is that does that work for Putin? What, are the Republicans aware of this problem? Um, are the Republican is the Republican leadership in Congress uh, able to do anything about it, and uh, or willing, uh, or are they just following what happened with Trump? And if they are following what happened with Trump, is Congress neutralized on this issue also? Well, they get the same briefings as the Democrats do on these uh, intelligence committees, and uh, they ostensibly know what's what is uh, what's up. And uh, so, hopefully, you know that th they would draw a line around that. But we saw in the in the last administration that they were willing to to line up behind Donald Trump more than putting national security ahead. But when it comes right down to it. I would be surprised if it's um, well. That said, I mean, when we're not strengthening our our, our voting laws and security laws and um, around that and our just basic uh, intrusions into our democracy, uh, it's hard to wrap around it. Like Tim says, Putin says, I don't have any control over that, and of course he does. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's up to us to strengthen this. We can't rely on uh, on someone like Putin to to be doing what we need to be doing ourselves. Is he happy? Yeah, he's happy. He runs a big country where he is an authority. That's not that big. He's a, it's, it's, authority. it's national product is really rather he's small. He's an authoritarian leader who commands, I think, reasonable um, uh, respect from his people. I think they like Well, and you put Navalny in jail. He has the power to do that. Yeah, you put your, your political adversary in jail. They but don't let me, let me ask you this. They Winston, when yeah. Trump was first elected, okay, the, the nexus... Um, between Trump and the NRA, and the nexus between the NRA, thanks to that woman who was ultimately arrested for it, um, and Russia was all very clear, it was triangular, Trump, NRA, Russia. Okay, and, and one time, I think it was the New York Times, went to a gun show in the South, and they went through a gun show with their you know cameras and interviewing people, trying to be flat effect about it. And um, the question they put to people at the gun show, the NRA crowd, was, uh, how do you feel about Russia? And the answer uniformly, universally, everybody they asked was, you know, the U.S. has been much too hard on Russia. They're really nice people. Uh, we have been, you know, p politically wrong in our uh, diplomatic relations with Russia. It's time we got friendly with Russia. It's time, you know, it's time we bonded up with Russia and um, you know, capitulated to some of their demands, what have you. And I thought that was extraordinary because in the past, don't you remember the Republicans were down on Russia big time, uh, down on Russia because it was the uh, communist pinkos over, over there uh, and something switched. Did you follow that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, consider their news source of most of the folks that are going to those shows. And uh, when it's if it's coming from Fox and they have a specific agenda that they want to push uh, and and the Republicans have been reasonably absent on that, I think that the traditional Republican line has been that it has been strong. It has it may rise again and they may view these sort of external threats as uh, as important as they used to. And and roles are flip-flopping now all across the spectrum about what's important and what's not for e each party. And it's interesting just to, sort of to see where these things are, are coming up to lie. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. Now, if you look at it from like Russia's perspective, Russia's always been kind of, you know, they're right next to Europe. They're part of the, the, the West in a sense. Uh, you know, we, we have this these very basic um, ideas of how we should organize our economies. The, the peoples are of, of a, a similar um, uh, background, and yet they've kind of always had their own area. They have their own area of influence. They're looking right now, you think about it, they've got uh, NATO basically banging down their door. They have a, a, a natural paranoia that uh, that the West is sort of coming after them. And I, I can understand that on some level. So they want to keep us off kilter too. They want to make sure that we don't really know, are we going to, are they going to invade Ukraine? Are they going to um, rattle Lithuania or Estonia? They are, are we really a threat to them? Do you really think the U U.S. is a threat to Russia? I mean, Russia is definitely a threat to us, but are we threatening them in some way? We have, we uh, besides the 20,000 nuclear missiles pointed at them, uh, not <laughs> not a huge threat. Um, <laughs> we, okay. have, we have way more in common with with the Russians than we don't. And the same with the Chinese. We have way more in common with everybody on this planet. Uh, we all want 
a decent government. We want good schools. So let me let me go to let me go to Tim. Tim, let me just um, let me just jump in on that last point Winston made, and is the greatest threat to Russia is the conversion away from fossil fuels because that is Russia's one of their big exports, and yes. that will that threatens Russia. Yeah, sure, and, and they have a, um, a very important relationship with Western Europe on gas, and we have a lot of gas here. I don't mean in Congress. I mean real gas, natural gas, and we are trying to sell it to the world. Trump was doing that, and I think that, you know the business, the, the industry around energy and gas is is wants to do that, wants to sell American gas to the world. So we are competing with them. On, on, on energy and fuel that way. Uh, but let me ask you this, though. Uh, Winston said, and I, I take everything Winston says very, very, uh, very, very. very <laughs> seriously. We, we haven't heard much, okay, since the early days of the Trump administration about all the, all the things that Russia has been doing. You know, maybe the news has gotten old or other news has supplanted it. Uh, news in Congress, for example, news about the insurrection, those kinds of things. Okay, but the, but the fact is, just a few days ago, the FBI raided um, the, this um, the, the two uh, magnificent properties. Uh, one in uh, let's see, one in Washington and one in New York, was it? Um, uh, that were owned by this uh, big shot Russian guy, and, and they didn't say you know what they were raiding it for, but they took out a lot of data. And that suggests that the FBI is now again busy. Uh, they have, um, you know, indicted and they have caused caused the, um, you know, exclusion of various people charged with uh, espionage and Im improper conduct, diplomatic conduct in the U.S. But this this seems somehow different. This seems to be leading to somewhere. Where do you, I know we're speculating here. Well, I, I, what I remember of this article or this, this news flash was um, this is the oligarch that was tied in with, um, remember the Trump administration had passed uh, election data, uh, research data to, um, to a Russian. That's the Russian's house that they, they, uh, they, they invaded. They had a warrant for it and, and searched and got more data. So maybe it ties all back to that. Um, maybe they're going back to... Uh, back to the future and uh, seeing if there was a, <laughs> there was an administration tie in uh, back in 2016. Who knows? Yeah, know. but so, that sounds like a pretty, pretty good guess. But what it suggests is, I mean, if you accept that and Winston, I accept everything Tim has to offer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. Um, if you accept that, then you, you have to come to the, the conclusion that the FBI believes that Russia is busy, 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 with or without Zuckerberg, um, in terms of uh, dividing the country on voting, dividing the country in general. Um, and somehow this, uh, this, this big shot Russian guy has something to do with that. Um, we're not out of the woods on that, are we? No, it's spy versus spy. I mean, it's it's the Cold War that never really thawed. It's I'm sorry, but we're still in a Cold War with Russia, whether we like to admit it or not. We just don't have arms races and, and you know, spies being. Uh, well, we, but, but Winston will tell you, we do have arms races. Um, you know, non-proliferation agreements seem to be torn up these days. We're in an arms race, aren't we, Winston? Yeah. Uh, w w we never stop being in one. Uh, every yeah. country wants to have. Um, military superiority, intelligence superiority. It's the way that the game is played. And as far as, yeah, Jim's right. This is the, the Cold War never really ended. We, we have, do you think those, what was it, 17 agencies that, that came out and said the Russians are interfering in our elections in 2016? Uh, this was unanimous. You think those people went to work the next day, the next year, or five years later, and they weren't focusing on Russia and China and, for that matter, everybody else. It's not like we don't tap every single nation's and corporate uh, and uh, Jay Fidel's telephone to find out what's going on um, in, in their minds and, and how to have leverage over those folks. And so the, it's just that, uh, you know, if, if Russia doesn't have a vested interest in this nation collapsing. They get a little bit more power, but what are they going to do? Become the world's policemen? They can't control things in their own yard. Their 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 life expectancy is plummeting. No, in a funny they're way, they're the underdog, world. aren't they? Let's see a picture, a map of Russia. They're they're actually not that 
their, their, their national product is not that much, but their land mass is huge. It covers, oh God, a good part of the world, actually. I thought what's interesting was they sailed with the Chinese between Hokkaido and the and Honshu in Japan uh, this week. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, they they did a joint. I did see that, and it was very troubling. There's an there's an axis going on between the two of them, which is very troubling. And you don't know how deep that goes. But that's a great a great subway a se se segue. <laughs> it's also a subway. Um, Tim, let's talk about China for a minute. You know, China is of great concern because they are also, as Winston says, they are relentless. They have never stopped. And, and now the mask is off in a sense that they are competing and Xi Jinping, you know, wants to rule the world. Let's see a map of China. Um, they want Taiwan. They want all the countries around them. Uh, they want the Belt and Road to extend all the way to Western Europe. They want to have influence, trade, um, you know, um, economic relations and economic leverage over everybody. They're in Africa. They're in South America. Where are they not? Um, and if their strategy is different than Russia's, and I think it is, it's all about, um, you know, um, overtaking us, uh, completely overtaking us economically. Um, and I suppose I would ask you, where, where does all that end up? Um, people say that in a few years' time, their GDP will be, you know, significantly more than the U.S. What effect does that have on our relations with them? What effect does that have, you know, in terms of our mm, politics? Well, I think Christopher Ray, director of FBI, um, went into great detail back in July um, about what are the threats that China poses. And there are the obvious ones, and I'll just rattle a few things off. Remember, they built up the China Sea with islands. The, so they could stake some real estate claim there. And now they, you know, their waters are their waters. And now we're, everyone's um, in violation of sailing past their waters, which is international waters. But now China says it's not international waters. So there's a, you know, there's a little real estate game there. Uh, we have the repression of Hong Kong. We have up the build up their Navy. I mean, their Navy is second to none. It's huge. Um, we have the, um, the flybys, the warplane, the warplane flybys into Taiwan airspace on a much more frequent basis. I think 115 of late. Uh, so there's one, and then of course we have the the report that uh, hypersonic missiles have been launched from space. Now that's I don't know if that's been fully confirmed or not. Uh, they deny it, of course, and um, but that's that's a suspicion that they did actually well, deliver a hypersonic yeah. missile. And the word the word is that it could reach anywhere in the world in 30 Correct. minutes. Correct. That's correct. And, and, and the more biggest, so it's impossible. Well, and, and the biggest thing, Jay, is that there's an agreement not to weaponize outer space. Um, if this is, if their satellites now are equipped with hypersonic missiles that could be loaded with nukes, uh, we've got a. It's the old Sputnik uh, in October of 1957. Uh, there's there's weapons that, that can reach us in in seconds versus you know 30 minutes. And but remember. Recently, the, there was a report too that they are also hacking us. And oh, we've well, that's, known this for some time. They're very yeah, good at I mean, it. They're they're good at it. So we have all these different fronts of how China is a threat. So to answer your question, what is their end game? The end game is uh, to be technology superior and economically superior to the United States. It is exactly what you laid out, and uh, they're doing quite well on this. And they've been at it for years and decades. Um, we talked. I don't know, years ago about China's influence and um, their foothold into Africa to get all the microchip uh, minerals. And they've got a corner on that market more than anyone has a corner on that market. And uh, there's, you know, that's one of the reasons that they suspect they want to go into Taiwan is to capture Taiwan as the number one microchip uh, producer in the world. So Winston, what are we doing about this? Um, you know, it seems to me the old the old days when uh, we were living under the umbrella of American exceptionalism, that we were the best country, the most democratic country, that we had the best army, um, that we had the best high moral superiority. Um, those days are gone. But the question is, what are we doing to deal with um, China's uh, very, very threatening maneuvers? Are we doing anything? Is Congress able to do anything? Is the military doing anything? You know, Trump uh, organized the uh, what is it, space, the space command. Uh, that's for all the space cadets uh, in the Republican Party, I think. 
so, you know, what are we doing? We, we seem <laughs> so busy fighting ourselves in Congress um, that you don't hear anything about what we might be doing to deal with China. Well, uh, Jay, uh, my interconnect internet connection's unstable. Can you still hear me? I might put my video off because uh, my face is uh, there. But, uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> no, the United States is still an, an incredibly strong, uh, has an incredibly strong military that can dominate worldwide. Uh, there's zero question about that. Are the Chinese catching up? Are they pouring a lot of money and resources into it? Yes. Are they a match for America? No. Could they? Could one of many nations inflict some serious damage on America or total destruction? Yes. Is it in anyone's interest to do so? No. Uh, so you know, the, the Chinese are just flexing their muscles as they develop. They do want to have uh, the same thing that America wants, which is domination, which is influence, which is power, which is wealth. They are building an incredible belt and road system, uh, like you said, across Africa. They're, they're in South America. Uh, they're cleverly lending a lot of money to these countries so that they're indebted to them in the same way that the British did 150 years ago. Uh, it's all about resource acquisition. And if you, you know, you're looking at uh, for the future, Jay, um, you know, po uh, the Chinese population's peaking in a year now. And th there's predictions that by the end of the century, America's population will be much larger than China's population because they're facing a demographic cliff uh, as these, uh, as their one child, uh, you know, policy comes to fruition and people just don't want to have any more kids anyway. You're having eight grandparents, uh, well, not eight grandparents, four grandparents per child right, right now. So, and, and a lot of those are the male female imbalance is, is striking. They're just trying, there's 113 cities, maybe a little more, maybe a little less in China that have a million people or more. They're, really trying to get down their infrastructure right now. They're trying to build up. They're trying to modernize so that when this- You're not making me feel any better, Winston. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you're, you're, I point. asked you what, what we were doing to countervail, to counteract these extraordinary moves that China okay. makes what, every what single doing, day. And I mean, if it. you've heard about this, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't heard about this. What Tim, have you heard doing, about Jay? this? Are we still All living right. in an exception? I, I got an answer America? for you, Jay, because I, I heard the president of the United States say it yesterday in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And he said the infrastructure and the social infrastructure bills is a way that we need to pass so we can compete with China. Now, compete with China as if they're already ahead of us. And in many ways, they are. Uh, I'm not sure I completely um, think they're way ahead of us, but they're... If they're not caught up, they're just about to catch up and their infrastructure, um, you know, they're moving technology far in advance of where we're at. I mean, they, I mean, Joe Biden cites it all the time. They've got bullet trains that go 300 miles per hour. Uh, look at their space program now. They're doing things, uh, they're on the dark side of the moon and, you know, they just put in their space station. So they're really trying to show the world uh, what they can do technology wise and they're, they want to be a showcase. Um, and we're, that we're behind them. Isn't yes. that legitimate? Yes. It's an accurate statement. It's not just a showcase. They're actually doing these doing things. Doing it, yes. And so um, I think China is the greatest threat, not Russia. And I think, you know, here's, but here's the, the, the positive thing. And that is we still have a very good trading relationship with China. And, and the more you trade with someone, the less likely you're going to see a military conflict. You tend not to go to war with your trading partners. And, and I know we have a lot of tariffs in place. And I'd like to see that settled out. I'd like to see those tariffs unwound and have a better trade um, balance with China and, and reduce the tensions. If you remember, the tensions started to increase the second Donald Trump got into office. Now, Donald Trump did have to do some things and, and lay a firm line down. And I respect that. And I agreed with some of his positions but at the expense of a pretty tense relationship with China is now in place. And that needs to be settled down a little bit. Um, and we need to balance the, the trade balance uh, playing field um, so that you know, partners benefit each other. And I think that's the hope for me is that we, we improve on the trade balance system. Are we doing that, Winston? Uh, are we actually improving our relations with China? That tension that Tim talked about, uh, seems to me that still exists. 
It seems to me the tariffs are still in place. Joe Biden has not taken them off. He could. He hasn't. Uh, it seems to me that the, the rhetoric is uh, pretty stressed on both sides. And it seems to me that we're not taking affirmative action to improve our relationship with them. And part of the reason is that they're not on our list of priorities. Our list of priorities has to do with all these internal domestic dispute things um, and not national international relations. So my question is, uh, what what is Biden actually doing aside from aspirational statements he makes in Scranton? Um, and uh, what can he do to actually get balanced with China, if anything? You know, this uh, this uh, supply chain choking that we're having right now. Where do you think all those ships off of L.A. <laughs> waiting to be unloaded are from? We can't buy the stuff fast enough. We can't even we can't uh, we can't buy it fast. Enough. We can't even unload it fast enough from China sending back empty freighters. We need to produce something that the Chinese want to buy, um, uh, first of all. But, you know, the reality is, Jay, you've got. 350, 400,000 Chinese students studying right now in America. It's not the opposite. They're coming here to learn from the teacher in this case. This is where they're coming to learn how to be, uh, whether it's making something better or better engineers or better uh, a freer society. They're exposed to all of the ideas that we have here. And in time, those seeds are going back. They're being planted right now. And they may have to bide their time right now. But eventually, people will say, you know what, I liked it when I was in Dubuque going to uh, Dubuque Community College because we had our clubs for this and that and the other. And eventually, it'll bleed through. China has its own uh, areas of influence. It has for centuries, uh, millennia. Uh, I don't think they want to be the world's policemen any more than the Russians do. Uh, this is sort of a, a task that falls on America, which is reluctant to enforce it at this point. And uh, you're seeing some fallout of that. Eventually... Uh, you know, we're sort of becoming chimerica on some level because our economies are becoming so intertwined. You can't you could pull out all the things from China that we make there, but there would be a, a world of pain over here. And I think over there as well, like Tim said, good trading partners don't go to war. It's just making sure that we're good trading. partners. Well, you'll have to admit there's been more talk about war, more written about war with China now than be before, before Trump and even during early Trump. But my final question, and for your final comments, though, here at the end of the show, Winston, um, is uh, how concerned uh, should we be that uh, Congress is not addressing this, uh, that, that Joe Biden is really not taking affirmative steps to deal with it, uh, that Tony Blinken is focused on other things, I would say, um, and that the American public is talking about hmm, politics and democracy and um, division um, and the elections and all of those really domestic issues. Uh, how concerned should we be that while um, we are mm, fiddling, our domestic relations and our relative position in the world is declining? You know, I mean, Jay, that the, uh, we are still the indispensable nation. I'm sorry to break it to you. It, uh, we, we still are. We have a lot on our plate. Joe Biden has so much to tackle, even if he didn't have the last four years to work on. Just okay, let me let me put it another way. Then we're we're in in the in great risk of losing uh, the right to vote. We're in great risk of, of having Congress become completely dysfunctional, unable to do anything. Okay, um, doesn't that ultimately affect our ability to contend with both Russia and China? We got a lot in our own house to clean up before we look abroad, but we can't. Doesn't that ultimately affect our ability to deal with Russia and China? Absolutely. And we got we got to clean up our own uh, house here first, but it doesn't mean that we don't need to look abroad and also work on that. Uh, you know, it's in everybody's interest to, to uh, get along, to go to higher standards, to act on best behavior, to stop this war talk. We don't need to be going to war with anybody, China or, or Russia. These are um, these are countries that we need to deal with and work with. If we're going to survive as a species, we have we have literally species wide events that we need. to. Oh, that's with. totally rational. But but the reality is we're busy with other things which are, mm, you know, fiddling. Yes, it, we and we are fiddling. And so we got to we got to pay attention to that. Absolutely, Jay, you're hitting it spot on. We're not going to solve it this week, but uh, I'm kind of remaining hopeful because we're
these we're we're becoming a global civilization now and people are needing to step back just like William Shatner did and take a look at it from a larger sphere because what happens in China they're experiencing the same massive floods um, uh, you know and and threats to their existential existence from a global climate wide perspective if nothing else and they're starting to say we can't do this alone we can't pretend to do this alone we need to just sort of uh, work together hope so hope so uh, Tim, you know, where do you see this going? This is, I'm talking final comments here, but where do you see it going? You know, things are evolving. For example, the country is evolving. And when you look again, whatever happens in these elections, we'll, we'll have a different country. Um, who's to say what it's going to be like? That's for another show. But, but in terms of our relations with these two mm, competitive contending countries with difficult um, uh, relationships that we have with them, um, what what is it evolving to? What's it going to be like in the future? Is uh, is, is is our re relationship with Russia going to be different? And how? Uh, this is a hard question. And is our relationship with China going to be different? And how? Wow, they are diff different, uh, difficult questions. And I, I'll take on China first. And that is, um, it's a carrot and stick approach. I think that President Biden needs to take. Um, where are the sticks? Okay, if I was the Joint Chief of Staff and if I was Secretary of Defense, I'd be in Biden's office right now saying, Mr. President, we need to get some uh, our naval fleet, you know, 15 miles off the shores of Taiwan right now. And we might even have to want to put some boots on the ground as a disincentive for China to have any second ideas or first ideas that they can invade. And, and the United States is a paper tiger as far as a ally. And um, we need to just have a... Um, something there that to discourage China from making that move. Now that's a bold, bold position to take. That's again, that's the, the, the stick approach. And then equally, I think that um, we should try again, as I said, uh, provide more carrots, provide um, an easing of trade tensions between the two countries. And by doing so, um, you know, China will see that we are a committed trading partner. Heck, we consume more than we, we sell them for, by far. So well, they I, say, uh, and let me, let me ask you one follow up here. They, they say that China sees the disruption in the American society as a great opportunity. Well, it is. And uh, tries Absolutely. to take advantage of it. And same with Russia, I suppose. Um, so uh, query, um, you know, we, we have to counter countermand that. But how can we countermand that in, in our system? Our system where we have trouble in transferring power, our system where we have trouble in, in tying our legislative shoelaces in Congress, our system when, when the public has lost confidence in government, even the Supreme Court. Um, China looks across the way and says, those guys, they can't get anything done. We have a huge advantage. We'll move in on them. Uh, isn't that what's happening here? It where is. does that wind up? It is, Jay, and, and it does hamper our ability to deal with Russia and China. In fact, Christopher Wray, again, director of FBI, spent another uh, afternoon in Congress talking about the domestic threat that we're currently facing. And of course, we, I know we could walk and chew gum at the same time, but you only have so many resources and so much synergy on one problem. And uh, this is an opportunity for Russia and China to take advantage of our domestic um, issues that we're, 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 we're entertaining. And that's unfortunate. But I think they can, you know, this country can um, keep the two countries at bay, uh, keep them from taking excessive advantage of us, and uh, we'll get through it. As, as Winston said, we will get through this. Okay, I guess, that, I guess that's the bottom line. We'll get through this. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to take a nap now. Uh, <laughs> we wore you down, I know. <laughs> I think, uh, Jay, my advice is take a Rip Van Winkle nap and uh, <laughs> and wake up and hope things are better. Choose something pretty far out in the future. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Winston Welsh. Th thank you, Tim Abicella. Uh This is uh, uh, politics for the people. Thank you so much, you guys. Aloha. Okay.